All right, welcome back to the shop. Well, today's Thursday. It's the last day of Fab Tech, but unfortunately, I'm back home. <laughs> um, definitely didn't take enough time off to go see the whole thing. I hit the high spots in the machinery hall and the high spots in the, uh, I th reckon it was a tube hall, and, um, and spent most of the time in the pipe and fabricating hall. Um, most of the stuff I wanted to look at was in there, with the exception of fireball tools. They were in another hall, and uh, I had to run over there right quick, and I did pick up two uh, monster squares. Um, I didn't, I didn't, the eight inch ones, I didn't want to um, carry them with me and then through the subway and back to the campground where I was staying at, so I'm just gonna have them ship them to me. Um, and we'll show you those when they get here. Um, looked at a bunch of other stuff. You know, of course you get the obligatory Mazak bag with all the catalogs and the information that you're looking for in there. And uh, I took some video, just took my little um, Canon camcorder in there, took a little video, and then took some shots around the uh, campground. So I'm gonna try and string all that together and get a video out, hopefully this weekend. Um, I don't see much of a problem, but um, you know, with work and all that, I don't know what's going on. I've been gone for a couple weeks, so <laughs> we'll see how that goes today. Um, but yeah, Fabtech. Man, um, I've been to a lot of trade shows, a lot of trade shows. I haven't been, been to IMTS, but I've been to, you know, a bunch of ham radio shows, a bunch of uh, woodworking shows. Matter of fact, 20 years ago, maybe 30 years ago, I was at the Congress Center for a woodworking show, and I don't remember it being that big. I really don't. It, that's, it, it was huge. Um, Trump and um, the laser company and the uh, um, uh, forming company and Amata, 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 I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, had huge booths, huge booths. I mean, three stories tall with a lounge and um, places to eat, it, uh, it's crazy. I'd hate to know how much money they spent. It had to be in the millions there. But anyway, um, if you ever get a chance to go to uh, a Fab Tech, I highly recommend it. E even if you go to any trade show, you would be surprised at some of the equipment that's coming out and there's the way technology is changing every day. You know, it's, uh, you have to keep up. You know, you don't know what's, you know, you don't know what's going on. You know, I work for um, a pretty big company, you know, Daimler. It's, it's not a small company. It's a very big company. And um, to see how far technology has changed versus what we use. What we use is very, very nice. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to lie. Hey, we know we have good tools. But compared to what's out now, it's a Stone Age stuff. It's, it's just unreal that how technology's changed. So with that, um, we'll get on with the video. Oh, one more thing. J.D. Brewer had a meet and greet for YouTubers and Instagram at his shop. And um, my brother is, like you know, he's the welding instructor at our local community college, and he couldn't attend. So what I did is I went to uh, Harbor Freight and just picked up an inexpensive Hobart helmet. helmet um, and I had all the guys sign it. And I was only expecting um, uh, welding tips and tricks guys to be there, but there, you know, there were some YouTubers there. So I got Dale Derry from Build Something Cool who signed it. Um, uh, let's see who else are YouTubers here. Adam Booth was there, A Bomb 79, um, Jim Bollinger from Do Right Fab, and Keith Rucker from VinnerMachinery.org. Um, he's probably the one that's got me into filming this thing. You know, I remember one of his videos, he said, uh, take a bunch of pictures. And I said, well, shoot, you know, instead of taking pictures, I'll just, you know, film it and then let somebody else share it. And, you know, that's how it goes. You know, I did ham radio videos, but. You know, we're getting into the machine and stuff or the fabricating stuff, stuff. So, you know, I thought I'd share that. And then from the other guys, um, J.D. Brewer, of course. Um, um, Jason from uh, Fireball Tools was there. And, um, very, very nice guy, man. They, he has got a hell of a product. So um, I, I, his future is bright. That's all I can say. Um, Roy Crumrun from Crummy Welding. Um, Isaac, and I'm a butcher his last name, so I'm not even going to say it. So I'll put a link to his uh, Instagram in the, uh, in the uh, below so you'll see that. But Isaac, if you ever watched or heard the Welding Tips and Trips podcast guys talk about him, he does a heavy uh, fab repair and stuff like that on, I reckon, on mining equipment or drilling oil equipment. Um, that's Isaac. And then, of course, Jody Collier, um, Weldmonger. So... Um, I was going to, you know, since he couldn't be there, I'll, I'll give him this helmet. He can display it in his classroom or his office or whatever he wants to do. So uh, with that, let's get on with some video. We'll start out in Georgia State Park. 
Um, this is a wooden covered bridge that was near it, um, or was it within the park. And what's so good, neat about this bridge, it's all wooden construction, and the only nails that I saw were in the deck. Everything else was pegged together. It was a, truly a sight to see. Um, very, very sturdy. I drove my truck across it and um, didn't even creak. So this is just a shot of the lake looking from the covered bridge back towards where the campground is. Of course, you can't see the campground for all the trees, but the trees look marvelous this year. Um, Tennessee was great. Coming through North Carolina was great. And then the leaves and stuff here in Georgia were just starting to change as you go through different zones. And this is just me driving across the wooden bridge. And you can see the dowel or the pegs sticking out of all the joints. It's just, it was awesome to see. And then this is a shot of the monument itself. Um, it's, you know, pictures don't capture how big this thing is. It's, a, it's very, very huge. They say um, the nostril of the horse, a man can stand in it. So it was unreal. And then this was an interesting thing. I walked around the corner and smelled this, and it's awesome the way it smells. And this is going into the Confederate Museum there at, the, at Stone Mountain. And then we went to J.D. Brewer's um, meet and greet, and there's a bomb, of course, and he was showing off his surface plate that he made, and um, it was very, very nice, very well machined, very smooth. It was just a good piece of that he did. And then some of the guys well, there. Good morning from Atlanta, or should I say Stone Mountain? Um, when I decided to bring the RV down here instead of staying in a hotel to go into Fabtech, so um, we got us a spot here at Stone Mountain and it's gorgeous beats a hotel room view any day so we're here at Stone Mountain it's on Wednesday uh, Tuesday and we're getting ready to drive over to the nearest Marta station and we're gonna hop on the subway and take it downtown because I don't want to drive my big truck downtown I think it and it probably be quicker to get downtown just taking the Marta so we're gonna enjoy some breakfast look at this gorgeous view of the lake um, I would show you Stone Mountain, but you can probably hear that it's raining right now, and it's covered in clouds, but it's just off to the right. You can see it very easily from here, so great, great, great campground. Definitely going to come back here again, but I decided I'm just going to use the camcorder today. I don't I don't like the uh, fisheye look that the uh, action cam gives me, and my DSLR is just too heavy to tote around all day today, so we're going to stick this in the backpack, throw a... Uh, couple of cards in there hopefully the battery lasts all day so if not we're gonna be hunting a charging station so come along for the ride we'll see ya and this is looking at the Marta station um, uh, surprisingly empty <laughs> but it was a great it only took 15 minutes to get downtown you know where it took me probably an hour an hour and a half to drive and then the event was at the World Congress Center and you know downtown Atlanta is a uh, concrete and glass so pretty neat um, as you go into the World Congress Center, this is a four or five story waterfall. Um, I don't know how far down it was. I, I don't like heights, so I didn't look that much. We stuck the camera over the edge. And then as you walk inside, the size of this place, this is just one hall. And it's hard to capture in a video how big this place is. Um, but they had all kinds of machinery in here running. Just unreal, the amount of machinery. Um, had a punch presses. I think I asked the guy at the end, this is a 46 die punch press, and it made short work of this piece of metal. I only filmed a short portion of it, but 46 dies um, made short work of that. So, you know, if you're in the industry where you got to have this, you got to have this. Do you need a bandsaw? This thing is huge. That's, the, you know, the size of the man at the control panel. That, that saw was huge. Um, I don't know what they cut with it, but it was big. Um, Piranha Booth, you know, looked at a couple of their plasma cutters. Um, they were handing out little uh, bottle openers, of course, the regular swag that you get from, you know, any any of these shows. But plasma cutters did a great job cutting this metal. Pretty interesting stuff here. As you know, you know, like I said, my brother's a welder, so I, I saw these cord reels and it, it made the back end of this truck look really neat. And he's in the process of designing his trailer, so I just thought I'd do that. 
and then went over to the Osborne booth and Jim Bollinger and Keith Rucker was there showing off their collaborative steam engine that they made, running it off of uh, uh, compressed air. But really nice guys, you know. Uh, check out their videos. And Jim also showed brought his cannon that he did for, uh, I reckon it was uh, John Saunders' meet and greet last year. And just another... Uh, plasma cutter that I liked was looking at not a lot of you know CNC machine equipment of course with IMTS just getting over with uh, you know you probably had your full fill of machinery there as far as CNC machining and then here's just another overview looking through this would be the welding hall ESOB had a huge booth crazy how big these things are and probably some of the softest carpet Jody Collier was there um, doing um, some welding demos and answering questions and meeting as many fans. Lincoln Electric had a, you know, probably a little bit bigger booth than Aesop had, um, but you could go in and look at all the equipment and all the stuff that they were selling. Pipe welders, um, you know, a small pipe welder here. So, um, took a little video of that. It, you know, it, unreal the, the machines that were running in this place. Just unreal. I'd have to get my brother to explain what this thing does. So I know it put a bunch of metal in that scene. <laughs> Pretty cool to watch, though. It's mesmerizing. You get looked in the, or looking at these machines, just how mesmerizing it is. got to give it to Lincoln for the biggest booth in here. It takes up the whole aisleway from one end of the hall to the other. Crazy, everything that's in here. And not only inside, but they also brought their uh, welding trailer and it was set up outside in between two of the halls. And of course, Fireball Tools, J.D. Brewer and Jason there. Um, J.D. did a great job explaining all the uses of the tool, and I was pretty set I was going to get them anyway. I was just torn between getting the aluminum or the cast iron, and I ended up getting the cast iron. And then um, I really like these clamps here for this welding table, um, so I just took a quick video of it so I could use it for reference. That's a good thing about a trade show. You can take a camera camcorder and just record what you're seeing, and then later on you can wash it. And then, of course, you know, bending uh, a press brake with a robot feeding it it was a uh, you know like i said you get drawn into these things and they mesmerize um trump had a cell set up where they were actually using uh their machines to go from raw product to finished product and it was it was pretty impressive um i didn't take any video of that i forgot to <laughs> like i said you get drawn into watching it so that was pretty much my fab tech um walk around tried to see everything didn't see probably a quarter of the show it was crazy so you don't have to go to fab tech you can go to any show just get out there and look at some of the stuff so that's it for this video so next time see ya <laughs>